I'm the policy officer in the European Commission in charge of uh, electric motors and uh, motor-driven devices like pumps, fans and compressors. Um, and uh, I've been in this position for about two years, meaning this is my first motor summit, so I'm very happy to be here and to meet you in this critical moment where we have our motor regulations about to be um, um, discussed with the member states, and it's now in public consultation, so it's a very interesting moment where we can exchange and receive uh, feedback. Um, this morning, in the previous presentation, I heard several times, Commission this, Commission that, so it's the moment, the true story, <laughs> about what we are doing for, what are our plans for, for, uh, for motors and, and motor-driven equipment. Um, I will, uh, my presentation will, is dividend in four parts, policy context, some achievements, then I will focus on the motor regulation itself and the review, and then speak about uh, the extended product approach. We also heard um, several times this uh, term this morning, how are we going into that direction? Um, this is the last point of the presentation. This will be the last point of the presentation. So, energy efficiency is an important pillar uh, in the EU um, energy policy. Um, energy efficiency first is, um, is a key element in the um, uh, energy union uh, that was put forward by President Juncker. And in our energy efficiency uh, policy instruments, we have um, financing, financial instruments, we have two very important directives, which is the generic energy efficiency directive and the energy performance of buildings. These are uh, revised and also the energy living regulation has been revised as part of the clean energy for package. Um, we have already a new um, EPBD directive for buildings and I heard that the revision of the energy efficiency directive has had a good step forward yesterday by being approved by the European Parliament. Um, a very important part of our policies is related to products, energy related products and we have an, uh, the eco design directive and the energy labeling regulation, which has been revised uh, last year, and also a tire labeling regulation. And these products policies are very important uh, because they deliver a huge part of the savings that we expect to do by 2020. It was estimated that this product policy would deliver half of the effort that is needed to, to go to, to, to meet our 2020 targets. So these are very important instruments in our overall energy efficiency policy. So how do we achieve energy efficiency products in product design? We act both on the supply side and on the demand side. On the, on the supply side, we have the Eco Design Directive, which is our policy instrument for setting um, energy performance requirements for products. Um, and we, on the demand side, we act with the energy labeling regulations, mainly for um, um, consumer products um, where, uh, with an energy label, we inform the potential buyer of the energy efficiency of a product. And these two regulations are framework regulations and they are um, completed by product-specific regulations which specify the requirement for each product groups. So, all the work we are doing now is organized via a NECO design working plan and this working plan specifies the product groups on which we should be working, um, new products or products that we need to revise um, and I will show you the list of the products later. Um, this working plan also specifies that we need to do more for circular economy. Uh, we need to integrate these aspects more and more in our regulations. The working plans also say that we need to continue our support to market surveillance because it's very good if we make regulations, but if they are not enforced, then there is no point. 
Um, and also we should continue um, international, international collaboration and uh, strive for more global convergence. So these are all the measures in place, both for eco-design, energy labeling, three voluntary agreements and the tire labeling regulation. And I have highlighted um, the electric motors regulation from 2009, circulators, industrial fans and water pumps. These are, um, let's say, the most relevant regulations for um, uh, the topic of today. What is the plan for this period 2016-2019? We are um, currently developing certain measures, so the, including a, a measure for compressors. Um, there are new products that will be that are under study, and a long list of measures that are under review, including electric motors, fans, water pumps, and circulators. So now we are in the process of adopting a package of measures uh, that will should be adopted next year. Um, this is now how a new way we work. We don't adopt one measure and then the other and then the other. We group the measures and we present them and they're then adopted um, by the Commission. So in this package, uh, we have a certain number of um, product groups with um, um, some products which are uh, under review, one new uh, product which is commercial refrigeration, uh, and of course, Im very important for us is um, regulation on electric motors and VSD, which is in fact a review of the existing uh, motors regulation, and we will include, our intention is to include uh, variable speed drives. Um, and the adoption is expected early 2019 and possible publication by mid-2019. And I put um, adoption in between brackets because the term adoption means something different for eco-design and energy labeling. These are different um, regulatory framework. So this term adoption has to be uh, taken carefully. So after the package, what will be next? Um, we have these, all these me measures in preparation for, uh, or, or in, under review for circulators, for pumps, fans, and air compressors. So for circulators, sorry, the um, review study has been published. Um, same for um, air compressors. Uh, and we need, and for pumps, this review study is still ongoing, but we hope to close it uh, this year. So um, for circulators and pumps, we need to organize the consultation forum, probably in the first quarter of 2019. Uh, for air compressor, we already had the consultation forum for standard air, but we still need to organize the consultation for all free and low pressure compressor and the in compressors, and the intention is to merge those two um, products, not to treat them as different product groups, but to merge them into one impact assessment that will lead to one uh, regulation. And for funds, we are a bit more ahead. Our impact assessment is, let's say, um, nearly achieved. We, ha we have to resubmit it. Um, so um, this is still need to be done. We still are working on it. And then the inter-service consultation could take place um, in the first quarter of next year. Oh, I think. So achievements, um, as I said before, the, uh, our framework for eco-design and energy labeling is expected to deliver about half of the 2020 um, uh, energy efficiency target, uh, meaning significant, very significant amount of uh, energy savings and CO2 emissions, also uh, 100 billion savings on con con consumer expenditures and also uh, extra revenue and jobs for uh, industry. Uh, and we see that our policy instruments lead to a significant market transformation. This is the example of an energy, label energy labeling regulations where um, we can see that the 
um, A class, which was dominating uh, in 2004, 10 or 11 days later, has already disappeared in favor of A plus, A plus plus, and A plus plus plus. And for electric motors with CMEP data, and this is the kind of data that we already saw this morning, uh, we can see that the penetration of IA2 motors uh, on the EU market has been increasing and then already is decreasing thanks to the increase of IA3 uh, motors. So we see um, when we adopt the regulation a very significant market transformation. So, I've been asked, but can we see that in reality, in energy consumption? So, we have, um, I have analyzed uh, Eurostat data, and we can see that the added value of industry, because for motor we are speaking of industry mainly, um, and if we compare uh, the added value, which is increasing, and the energy consumption, it's decreasing, uh, there is obviously a big um, improvement in energy efficiency in the industry, but then we need to be a bit more precise in the analysis. I try to do this analysis to, to see, can we see the effect of our regulations? And we see that there is a difference for um, fossil fuels and electricity. The progress in electricity are smaller, and we analyze the data. I think there is a transfer, a transformation of industry where we use less fossil fuel and we use more electricity. So this, I thought maybe the best way to try to see the effect of our regulation would be to analyze the share of electricity. And it's interesting, what I see here, is um, that the share has been increasing steadily until 2000. 11, where the, mo the motor regulation started into force, and then, then it flattens. And the difference, if we compare the trends, is about 35 terawatt hours in 2016, and our impact assessment for the motor regulation tells us we should save 22 terawatt hours. But there are all the other regulations that also enter into force, fan, um, fan pumps, that also could add this. So, it's impossible to say this is the effect of the motor regulation, we cannot prove it, but it's an indication that we see in the um, data the effect of what we are doing. Um, now, I coming to the core of my presentation, well, um, the, pr the um, regulation on electric motors. So, is the regulation has been adopted in 2009, and we target three-phase induction motors, two to six poles, 0 0.75 to 275 kilowatts, and the requirements are IA3 or IA2 plus VSD. I think you know all this. And there is a review clause which, is, which should revise uh, the regulation. So where do we stand now? Uh, we have come a long way because we started this revision in 2012 with a review study. We had a consultation forum in 2014. Then we did our impact assessment. This process has been a bit um, complicated. Uh, and then uh, we had finally a positive opinion of, on our impact assessment in 2017. And we launched our inter-service consultation in the summer. And now we are in the phase of public uh, consultation or feedback is a better term uh, that started for four weeks on the 24th of October and it's open until 21st of November meaning in um, until uh, one week next week and I put here for those who are interested the feedback portal where you can download the draft regulation and possibly um, make comments in parallel, we have uh, the notification to the World Trade Organization, where also uh, countries outside the EU can uh, um, comment if they think we are introducing some trade barriers. And then the next step will be the regulatory committee, where we meet with the member states, we present our draft, we present the comments we have received, and we discuss, and possibly the member state vote, and they decide um, in which direction we should go. Uh, this will be followed by a um, scrutiny period of UN Parliament and Council. What is the purpose? Um, 
through the eco-design regulation, they gave us a kind of mandate to adopt this regulation, and they will check if we are within our mandate, if we are not uh, going outside our mandate. Um, if this is all okay, then there will be an adoption um, and pu publication, and we hope our target is that would happen um, by the middle of next year. So what is in this regulation? Um, we are covering uh, the electric motors and the drives. What is in green here is the scope of the current regulation and the require and associated requirements. Um, so um, the scope, no. It's not correct. I, if I changed my slide last night and the green box should go up because the, the, the scope, the current scope is, is here. So sorry about that. Um, but the main message here is that we are um, not continuing with this dual option IA3 or IA2 plus VSD because we have seen that in practice we cannot enforce it, it's not happening. So we think it's not relevant to require something that cannot be enforced. So um, we replace it by a sim very simple requirement, all these motors should be IA3. And then we extend the scope, we include uh, the 8 volts motor that were not included, um, we include the larger motors up to uh, 1000 kilowatts, and uh, we revise some of the exemptions for brake or ATEX motors, and we also um, increase the scope towards um, smaller motors, um, to, one, to single phase motors and uh, increase, increase safety uh, motor which have a lower, uh, all these motors have only IA2 requirements. And for drives um, from 2021 the requirement would be IA2. And this is still a proposal because as I said it will be also discussed, negotiated with the member states, and also we will take into consideration the feedback that we, that we receive in this consultation process. And also, um, we are removing some exemptions and adding a few exemptions, um, let's say, to, to refine a little bit um, the scope. So, this is something from our impact assessment uh, study. What we think is the efficiency of, for example, of 1.1 kilowatt motor with the effect of the different regulations and also uh, the first very visible effect in energy efficiency was the um, CMEP EU agreement where we really had a good progress and then we adopted the regulation. So this is in green the business as usual, what would have happened according to our study without the regulation and what changed the regulation has introduced and what change the review will introduce. You may seem it's not so much, but in fact, in the current regulation, we already have this option IA2 or IA3. So there is already a big share of the market that is IA3. So I, requiring IA3 will not bring that much additional saving, but we still think it's a thing we should do. Overall, the results, the impact we expect from this um, is a saving of about 100 terawatt hours, which is a bit less than what we expected, but with it's still a very uh, significant saving. But this is the saving for the current regulation, so it brings about 100 terawatt hours. The revision of the regulation will bring us less um, savings, significantly less. We were actually disappointed. I see that my time is. Um, elapsing and this observation that we are get by increasing the requirements the first step we get a lot of savings and when we increase the requirement we get less is for us questioning um, are we reaching the limits of eco design what should we next what should we, should we do next to uh, increase the savings and of course this is where uh, we start talking about the extended product approach um, I, I think I see that my time has passed, so I will, I will not show the slide, but maybe deliver a key message. Um, I think there are a lot of expectations on eco-design as 
policy instrument. Um, it has been very successful in transforming the markets on products. The, um, and I have the impression that some people think that it can do everything. And we have been working very hard, for example, uh, with the pumps, uh, within the pump study, to a, a very ambitious um, extended product approach, whereby we would, in fact, require uh, a VSD for variable um, speed application or uh, variable flow application. It was not formulated like that because we cannot, we cannot formulate it like that, but there was a clever um, matrix that was put in place that, in fact, you could only meet the requirements in variable flow application if you have the VSD. And we have seen, but how can we enforce that? Because it's very application specific, and we have been discussing with meeting with market surveillance authorities from member states, because in the EU, market surveillance is a national competence, and we have a lot of discussion with them, and we found out we cannot enforce that. It's not something we can go that way so far in the systems approach. So we need now to um, understand what can we achieve with the co-design and enforce, and what could we do with maybe other policy instruments to tackle this um, the, the, the very important savings at the system level. And I must be very clear that there was this impression maybe in, in this morning presentation that we are not interested in the savings at system level. It's not true. But we need to have the right instruments. There is no point to have a very ambitious uh, regulation with extended system approach if we cannot enforce it. So we really need to focus what is the right instrument for what. And EcoDesign is good at making the bricks. We make good motors, we make good drives, we can maybe also make sure that the bricks fit well together. This is what we do for compressor, we're trying to do with fans. Um, but we cannot go and ask everything from Eco Design and say we will solve and tap all the energy uh, savings at system level. I think this is not the right policy instrument. So we are ready to continue the discussion and the reflection and see how we can go and save the additional savings. Um, but it's, we, we need to find a proper uh, policy instrument. But at least what we are happy to do is that we are putting solid bricks, very efficient components, that will enable this um, um, extended product approach and systems approach. Thank you.